Crisis 2 still holds up after so many years, so I thought why not make a video discussing why I think it's still great. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Instead of following Nomad in the first game, we follow one of his teammates, Prophet. And the way they decided to continue his story was interesting and I kind of liked how they executed it. It pays off more in the third game, as in this game, they don't really focus much on it for a good reason that I can't spoil. In this game, the focus is around the Seth and how big of a threat they are going to be. How their lore is explained and how they are related to the characters of this game are well done and intriguing. It also explores Cell as an organization and its CEO, Jacob Hargreave, who built the suit, which was another great storyline as well. It's not really a predictable story as there are some interesting developments in the story that you won't expect as the story is not just so black and white. The story is also supported with some excellent music from Hans Zimmer which is complemented with some memorable cutscenes. I only wish there was a bit more development with Prophet's character in this game but at least they explore it more in Crisis 3. Overall though, it's a decent story that builds on the lore of the Seth and Cell quite well which I'm sure many people will find interesting. The gunplay in this game is really fluid and feels quite decent to use. It's accompanied by some brilliant sound design that still sounds very good in this era of gaming. The sound also helps you to feel the power of each gun and gives a genuine weight to them. I also love how every gun has certain uses in certain situations. The game also does a good job of scattering them all over the combat encounters to encourage you to seek out the best weapons for each situation. For example, in smaller areas you will find more shotguns which will help you greatly and in bigger areas you will find more sniper rifles to help you take out enemies from a distance. The enemy variety is decent as well, with cell enemies having archetypes such as snipers, the basic enemies and the turret manners. The Seth also have some variety with your grunts, commanders, brutes, stalkers and pingers. All of these enemies have different weapons that will be more effective against them which requires you to pick your weapons wisely and use everything in your arsenal to overcome them. My only problem with the enemies is that their AI can be very brain dead at times which just takes you out of the experience. But at least, it's not a problem that happens often. Nanosuit also feels very great to use and it really helps in stealth as it has such a useful cloak. It allows you to get the weapons you want without getting detected and allows you to sneak by enemies if you want to. It has many uses and can help you get out of a sticky situation. The maximum armor mechanic is definitely something you want to use in every gunfight but you have to manage your energy efficiently otherwise you will run out of it very often. The visor is also another helpful tool that allows you to detect enemies before they detect you. It's very useful when scoping out an area and can help you plan out your encounters with tactical options. The nano vision mechanic though was not helpful in my opinion as you barely used it in the game. There were only a few instances where you needed to use it so it felt like a huge afterthought. The upgrading system was nice to interact with as it helped you get even stronger but I feel like it could have been handled better. There are certain abilities that clearly outclass the other ones in each skill tree and once you get them, you don't have to care about the rest. This is because you can only activate one skill at a time for one skill tree which means you will finish upgrading your character a bit too early. They should have added more upgrading options as it felt like a wasted opportunity. Another waste of opportunity is that a nano suit does not feel as strong as it did in Crisis 1. This is due to it losing some mechanics such as maximum strength and speed which is sad in my opinion. Why remove those mechanics when they were perfectly fine in the first place? Despite these problems though, the nano suit still feels good to use and combat as a whole is really fun. There's not really much to talk about when it comes to the collectibles as they are just your normal collectibles that you collect for the trophies. The spinning ticket collectible was interesting and funny though, I'm not gonna lie. The email collectible was one that I like to collect as it expands on the world of Crisis and his characters. If you ever decide to get the collectibles in this game, I recommend you to get those. Despite those two collectibles being decent, the others felt like a chore to get which is why I think the collectibles in this game are not that great. Crisis 2 has a great combat system accompanied by a decent story that will keep you interested throughout the runtime of the game. The combat still holds up to this day and I will always remember how good it looked all those years ago. If you haven't tried out this series yet and you are an FPS fan, you should definitely check out the remastered version of the Crisis trilogy. So what do you guys think of Trisys 2? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. And with that being said, this has been 2367 Ruben, signing out.